Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Tip of the Week. I am joining you guys this week from California and um, I'd like to continue along here with the discussion of uh, the uh, working in a 3D space. Um, this week we're going to start doing something that can only be done in Harmony and that is importing and animating and rendering out 3D models uh, directly in the software. Um, but to start out today we're actually going to start out in Maya and I'm doing the demonstration here in Maya because Maya is the software that is kind of tried, tried and true uh, for this whole process. There are some people that are experimenting with other technologies like with Blender and, and 3D Studio Max and as I go I'll explain the, the aspects of it that can be done with multiple softwares and, and the ones that um, and how you can do that but I will focus on what we can do with Maya since that is the most um, uh, common um, industry standard software that I hear people using. So here I am in Maya and um, I've already modeled and textured my car. In this case it doesn't have any actual textures on it, it just has some shaders. I did set this car up with a ramp shader so if we actually render this car out then you can see that it has that kind of clear definition line between the highlights and shadows and that's set up at the ramp shader or it's a, it's a kind of tune shader, right, the ramp shader. Um, and it's one that some people like to use. Um, so I did that with this one and then I'll also import a different model after uh, which is a background that's textured so that we can see the difference in how to do that. Um, so in this case now, uh, when you have the everything set up here, you've, you've got it ready to go, um, the first step that you need to do is exporting the model to import it into Harmony. The second step, or the second major stage, that I'll talk about next week will be how do you actually render this out. But this week I just want to go over the first stage or the first process which is exporting the model from your 3D package into Harmony um, to integrate it in and do some animation in there. So um, from Maya now um, you can go to Windows and um, it's in Settings and Preferences and then Plugin Manager and there is a plugin that uh, can be sent to you from Toon Boom uh, for Maya versions up until Maya 2012 and then from Maya 2013 onwards we recommend the use of the FBX but um, for Harmony 9 we had a plugin that was called the OSB plugin and we can send you this plugin to use with Harmony 9 and you can install it in Maya and from there now if you go to your plugin manager then it's called lib maya to osb and you can load and auto load this uh, plugin in here. Um, you can also use FBX and when you use the FBX format that's something that can be used from any software so you can export an FBX from Blender or from 3ds Max and you can import those in. So everything that we do today at this kind of phase for the import phase can be done with multiple softwares. Where it becomes a little bit tricky is when you render it out, and I'll talk about that next week. So when you have your plugin loaded in there, now with this car, I can do a file export all. It has to be export all. You can't just do export selection with the Toon Boom export. Um, but from here now, you can see there is a T TB 3D export, Toon Boom 3D export, and that's your OSB export. And then I've also got some FBX exports in here, which I could use as well. So if you're using Harmony 9, then you've got to use the TB3D export. If you're using Harmony 10, you can use either the TB3D export or um, the FBX export. So um, then when you export this out, what happens is you can go into Harmony. And so I'll just go to File, Import, 3D Models. And I can browse for this one. And um, now, I did also on that car from Maya, I had that ramp shader on. So you remember the ramp shader is the one that gives it that kind of line, the sharp line from the lighted area to the dark area, which makes it look more like a tune shader. When you export um, an OSB file with the ramp shader and you import it in, um, it does some funny things to the textures. So I'll just show you what it looks like. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this car came in here, uh, but it came in with a rather odd looking texture that's not the same one from the inside. If you disable the ramp shader and replace it with a regular Lambert for example and export the OSB then the shaders come in normal. 
So I would definitely recommend if you're going to use the FB or the OSB format to do that. Um, you can also import the uh, FBX file. So let's go file import 3D models and I'll browse here and I'll bring in the FBX and I'll also just create a new layer with this one as well. And I'll turn off the other one. So now we see that this one here imported in with a bit of a nicer texture. But it's kind of not in my camera view and it's really off to the side in my perspective view because it lines it up with the drawing grid. The drawing grid here lines up with the drawing grid in Maya. And so if we look at the drawing grid in here, it's off to the side and that's why it's coming in off to the side. But that's okay because when I'm in Harmony now, I can go in here and I can add a peg layer and I can double click on this peg layer, enable 3D, and now I can move this object around or I can scale it down. I probably want to scale it down first. And I always recommend using a separate peg instead of doing the enable 3D on the 3D layer itself. And the reason I do that is because when it's a separate peg, let's say you import in more than one model, you can make all of those models a child of the same peg. And then when you scale it down, they'll all be scaled down by the same amount. So that's why it's really handy in, in the case of 3D to use a peg. Also here, um, the pivot point is off to the side. So I can take my rotate tool and I can move my rotate tool for the peg uh, or I can move the pivot point for the peg into the center if that's going to make it easier for me to move this thing around. So now I can go back to my transform tool and I can do anything I want here. I can rotate this guy in and sorry I'm using a MacBook Air here so it's a little bit um, not not a very good graphics card for processing the 3D elements it's also something that you should keep in mind when you are doing 2D 3D projects is that as you're processing 3D elements you do need to have a, um, a computer that supports both the 2D and the 3D system requirements so in other words if you um, are looking at using a laptop or or a desktop machine or purchasing a new computer you should try to fill, fulfill our system requirements and the system requirements of the 3D program that you're using to take best advantage of this. So in this case, I'm on a laptop that's not a very high-powered laptop, so it's a little bit slower, but we can still show the concept. So let's just say as an example here, um, I want to put a little animation on this. I can move that car back in space, and then I can go to a frame later on, and I can move it forward, and sometimes it's easier to animate it from the perspective view, sometimes it's easier to animate it from the top view or from the side view so you can animate it in there like that. Maybe I'll have the car go out of the view entirely. Just like I was mentioning last week, um, I think I mentioned it last week, when you zoom out of here you see all this distortion around the edge of the camera. Um, this is kind of normal in the camera view because this is stuff that you're not actually seeing. The camera framing is in here and you need to disregard what's going on out there. It's different from the perspective view and the perspective view doesn't have that distortion when you move around or when you look outside because the perspective view is totally independent of the camera whereas if you're just zooming out of the camera here you get a distortion effect around the outside. Um, if you want to you can uh, click on that camera button there and turn on the camera mask so I think when I did mention this before was in relation to Storyboard Pro. So it's the same concept from Storyboard Pro that we have here with the car. So now that I've got this animating in, I could even go in on this and, um, and I could do anything that I would normally do on this layer. Like I could double click on my velocity, for example, to bring up the Bezier editor on this one. And I could add a little bit of ease onto that movement so it starts slow and then appears to move fast and then I could check that out and maybe even play this back so you know if it's not going fast enough then I would want to move the keyframe in so that it zooms past faster just like you do with your regular 2D elements Oof. so that's much better um, and then that's how you actually do the the animation in here it's pretty pretty fast easy simple in the same way that you would do it um, with a 2D layer. Now let's take a quick look at doing something that is textured and doing something more like a background. Um, so I'll open up a, a scene file that has everything in it. Um, 
or actually I'll open up just the loft first to, to show you how you can export this one. So this is what the loft looks like in Maya and I will export this loft out into Toon Boom. It's got an outside and an inside and it renders out when you hit the render button. You always kind of want to check to make sure it renders properly in Maya because when you get to the rendering stage in Harmony, which we'll do next week, um, if it doesn't render properly in Maya, it won't render properly in our software either. But this is what I'm going to render out here. When I actually am bringing everything together, if I want everything to be the same size, let me open up the scene file that has everything in it. So in this scene file, I've got many different objects. I've got the background there, I've got this platform, I've got this car, and I've got that um, garage door. And I want all of these elements to be separate elements, but they're kind of a part of a set that will always be together. So because of that, I want one file that has them all in it so that they're at the right relative size. But when I export it, because you're doing the export all, you just want to select, for example, the car. Um, you'll temporarily delete everything else in the scene. You'll do a save as of the scene, save it as, you know, car.mb, my binary and then you can export out your FBX. Then you can undo, undo, get back to the main scene that has everything in it, and then you can just save the platform um, as a new scene. Do a save as platform, and you can save out your FBX or your OSB. So in the end, everything that you want to animate in Harmony should be on its own model or in its own scene file. But you still would have a master scene that has everything in it just to keep everything at the same size. So then once you have exported everything else out, you can go back in Harmony. Now I can do a file import 3D models and I'll browse now for the loft, which in this case I have an OSB file. Create a new layer for that. And so now you'll notice that um, when the loft comes in, the loft comes in with its textures. It shows um, an OpenGL preview of the textures here directly in the software. And it shows those textures directly in the software because when you save the FBX format and the OSB format, it will package the textures in or bundle the textures in with the file. In the case of FBX, you have to enable that option, so you have to make sure that you turn on bundle the textures. OSB, it's on by default, so you don't have to worry about that. But once it's in here, just like before, I could even attach this loft to the same peg as the car so that they're um, sized relatively the same. And um, so if I now take a look in here, as I'm moving around in my perspective view, I'm using the same space bar uh, one and two to zoom in and out. Um, these are the two move shortcuts. And then it's Alt and Control, or sorry, uh, yeah, con Control and Alt or uh, Command and Alt on Mac to move around in this space. So the relative sizing here is correct for the car, but the car is, um, you know, on the ground and stuff. So I can keep the um, the car or the loft and the car sharing the same peg there, but I'll add an additional peg for the loft, and I'll also make this in a 3D peg so that I can move the loft around. So uh, in my perspective view now, I can zoom out of here, and then I can move this loft and reposition it relative to the car so that it makes more sense what the car is doing because the car is probably going to be moving uh, or, or driving out of the loft so I might want to just move that over and maybe I'll make use of my top view just to drag this guy over really quickly here and uh, reposition that the way I want it to and I definitely want to have the opening of the door over on this side so I like to grab just on the red, uh, red, green and blue handles when I rotate things to constrain the axis that I'm rotating them on um, and sometimes, by the way, it also helps to have certain scenes that have walls cut out of them. So, for example, I could have a version of this model that doesn't have this front wall so that as I'm... Oops, and I don't want to actually have animation on that, but I'll fix that. Uh, so I might want to have this wall cut out of one version of the model so that it's easier for me to manipulate that in the software. Oops, what did I do? Um, I think I moved the wrong keyframe. So this, it looks good at the end, but it doesn't look good at the beginning. So looks like there's a keyframe on that layer as well. Let's just hit, hit F7 to remove that keyframe and remove this one. And, oh, I know why. There's movement on the 3D object for the loft because there's movement on that car peg. So um, 
you know, I probably don't want to make this loft actually a child of the car. What I should do in this case is I should have a peg that is just for the sizing. And uh, why don't I just go in here and copy the sizing information from the car peg that I had. So my scale in here is 0 .055, so I'll put that on this one instead. So let's just put that as 0 .055 make that match this one and then I'll put the uh, scale here 0 0.055 scale X scale Y and this one also has a scale Z because it's a 3D so I have to enable 3D on that and then 0 0.055 and then I'll just put it on this one back to 1 it's probably the easiest way uh, so originally it's, it would have been better if I just originally had um, one peg for the sizing and then another peg to do the animation on, but just to fix it now. Just double click on that and then put this at one. Let's try that. Whoa, what did I do? Oh, because there's an animation on it. So let's remove the animation from the scale. Sorry about this, guys. I should do it right from the beginning. Okay, there we go. So now I've got this car animating through. And uh, it's looking pretty good, except for the fact that the car is um, behind the building. So I can go ahead and adjust the framing on this. Maybe I want to move the building around. So um, I'll make sure that both the car and the loft are in the same um, scaling factor. So they're both part of that same scaling peg. And then I'll go ahead and um, go on my loft layer here, and I'll adjust the, the position of the loft. So let's just go in that first frame, and maybe I'll move the loft a little bit back. And I can take the loft, and I can also rotate it so it's at the same angle. as the car. So in any case, as you're working here with 3D objects, you um, want to make use of your top view, your perspective view, your side view, and so on to really get these guys um, arranging together. And then as you're working with 3D models, you can also um, work with 2D layers in this 3D space. So just like you can in Storyboard Pro, you could go in here and you could have um, you know, a 2D layer that you're drawing on. So let's just add a drawing layer. Oh, I've already got one there. And then I'll draw something. So let's draw in white just because my background here is pretty dark. So I'll grab a white color and I'll just draw something. It's my scribble. So my wonderful scribble now exists in 3D space. So everything that exists in 3D space, you want to enable 3D on probably to be able to move it around and then you can take your transform tool and you can reposition that. So if this is my drawing layer, I want my drawing layer to be in the right Z depth and everything for this scene um, to make it work with the 3D element. So this is a super cool concept to be able to work with 2D elements and 3D elements together in the scene directly. And so at this point, I have to finish up because I've gone way over the time that I was supposed to spend. And um, so at this point now, if you render this out, if you do a file export movie, it will just render it out with the OpenGL preview of your 3D models. Because I don't have any rendering modules in here, it will render out with the OpenGL models uh, or the OpenGL version of the model. So in, in other words, it renders out exactly what you see in the camera view. And the camera view, because it's kind of a preview model, the textures aren't loaded in as the full textures. They're a little bit lower just to save um, the memory. And also, there's no anti-aliasing on these guys. So it's really not good enough for a final render. But if you're just going to rotoscope on top of these things, or um, you know, if you're using the 3D model as reference, then this is more than good enough for the purpose of the reference. Uh, but when you want to render out with a final render, you really need to use an outside rendering engine, and that is what I will talk about next week.
So take care, guys, and I'll see you next week.